Did I make a huge mistake? Buying pre-construction condos is confusing with literally 962 condo projects between Mississauga and Bowmanville. How do you decide which one to go with? So in this video, I'm going to share with you my personal experience with buying a luxury pre-construction condo in downtown Toronto. Things like what was the process? How are the deposits? How do you know when to buy? What mistakes I made and what I would do differently and so much more. Learn from everything that I've gone through so far, including what I regret. I'll share it all with you so that you do not repeat my mistakes. I'm thinking this is going to be like three or four episodes in the series, maybe even more. And for this one, you can jump to the different topics for this video if you check out the video description. And by the way, I'm Fred Tam. I'm a real estate broker here in Toronto with Right at Home Realty. Welcome to the channel where I'm putting out new videos every single week to update you on what's going on with the market and also to give you the best tips to help you reach your real estate goals. Hit subscribe to stay updated and to make sure you catch the follow up videos from this series. I've also helped people with buying pre-construction condos around the GTA and getting into one myself was also a fun experience and I'm happy to share it with you. Let's go. When I was getting into the pre-construction condo market, I was already familiar with the process because I've helped people in the past with their purchases. One thing I did not know was the first-hand experience and I'm not saying that I bought one just to see for myself and I'd be lying if I said I haven't had mixed feelings about the purchase after three years. Thankfully, the project is coming along quite nicely and it's likely going to be on time, which isn't something you hear very often when it comes to pre-construction condos. It's common to see these types of projects delayed and some developers even declare bankruptcy, leaving construction in shambles and buyer deposits in limbo. We saw this happen a few times over the past few years and that's a scary thing. Imagine putting tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars from your savings into buying a pre-construction condo only to end up with an incomplete project and maybe even some of your money back. Not only do people's lives change during that time, but so do home prices and finding yourself with a canceled project a few years later can leave you buying in a market where home prices have already gone up. So with so much risk, is it worth it? Three years later, I still say that it was and I'll explain why in this video. First, let me tell you about the process I went through starting with finding the unit. How did I go about finding the right pre-construction unit that I wanted to buy? What was the paperwork like? I was in the market for an investment opportunity, but also a place I might want to live in one day. I eventually narrowed it down to three projects. One of them was at 8188 Young in Thornhill. Lots of lucky number eights in that address, so that was kind of cool. I was attracted to this because I think the price was pretty reasonable. What I didn't realize is that I was actually late to the game for this project and prices already went up. When you first check out a pre-construction condo project, you'll get a price sheet that tells you how big the unit is, what direction it faces, and obviously the price. And the prices you see typically go up literally every week after the initial sales launch, and I'm not even talking about the public sales launch. They've already gone up a few times ever since sales started with friends and family or platinum VIP launch phases. This project launched in October 2020 and it was around the end of January 2021 when I was looking into it. By then, the deposit structure was already adjusted to attract more buyers. One of the original payments was 5% that was required within 90 days. The incentive stretched this out to 2.5% in 370 days and then another 2.5% in 540 days. Let's say the unit was $700,000. Instead of paying $35,000 in three months, I could pay half of that in one year and the other half in another one and a half years, giving me more time to save up but chances were that I was already paying a premium and I wasn't getting the best deal. So I decided not to go with it for this reason, but also because of the location. I was born and raised in Toronto and I didn't see myself moving to Markham because highways were far away. Nearest one was the 407, which is nice, but I grew up living a few minutes away from the 407, DVP and 401. And that sort of spoiled me. And for work, it's just better for me to be able to access the different highways to get around the city. So here's what I think. Go with a pre-construction project you're comfortable with in terms of location. With pre-construction, you're not short on options. There are a ton of projects at any given time in the GTA. The last time I checked, there were 962 projects between Mississauga and Bowmanville right now. You could literally miss an opportunity and it's pretty much a guarantee that another one will come up, which also means that you'll always have an opportunity to find a new development with a unit you'll fall in love with. The one thing you cannot change is the location. So decide on the location, stick with it, and the perfect unit will follow. The other project I was interested in was called Galleria, located at Dufferin and DuPont in Toronto. Price point for this one was also pretty attractive at the time, but just like 8188 Young, I wasn't one of the first buyers to get the best price and the building location just wasn't for me. 
And even though they were offering some good incentives at the time, I decided to find another project because I had options, so I had to explore. And different condo pre-construction projects will offer different incentives. I got an email the other day that said I'd get $200,000 worth of incentives without any actual explanation of what they were. And not only did it say I only had to put down 5%, it also had this headline in a giant bold font that said, we'll pay for your mortgage. So I was like, what the heck does that actually mean? Because it felt a lot like clickbait. It almost sounded like they were at the point of giving these condos away for free, which isn't far from the truth because there was a good chance the developer was losing money at this point. They're too far into construction to back out, and if they did, selling their units at a loss would have been better than not selling them at all. Or worse, going bankrupt. There was an article of 22,000 pre-construction condo units that have not sold. That's an increase of 41% from the previous year, so it's clear that the pre-con market is not on fire right now. So lowering prices and offering incentives is their way of boosting sales and being able to offer $200,000 in incentives and only needing a 5% down payment meant you likely had to go with their bank of choice to finance your purchase, which isn't such a bad thing when you think about it because they're probably going to pre-approve you anyway. And at the end of the day, their loss is just a business expense impacting their bottom line. So they're not worried. They're better off selling at a loss and keeping their credibility as a developer instead of backing out of a project and losing all credibility. And while I did go on to look for a credible developer who had the financial backing and a strong history of condo developments, my mistake was thinking that I found the deal of a lifetime and I had to jump into it. Probably felt a bit of FOMO. I ended up going with 8 Wellesley by Center Court Developments. When you're going with a project, don't get caught up with FOMO, fear of missing out. Like I mentioned, there's nearly a thousand projects to choose from. Maybe not all of them are in the area that you want to buy in or move to one day, but that's okay. The point is that you have options. Could I have waited for other options? Absolutely. Absolutely, but I didn't because of FOMO. But I did do my research on the project and developer, which gave me comfort knowing it was going to be a solid investment. And I recently checked out the site and it's looking pretty cool. First, I walked from Wellesley Station. It literally took only two minutes to reach the building, but would have actually been 30 seconds less if I caught the light. Can't get them all, right? Centercore is pretty selective when it comes to their development areas. They chose this location for a few reasons. The University of Toronto is a 10 minute walk west, which is the direction I'm walking in here. If I kept going, I'd end up at Queen's Park. Young and Bloor in Yorkville are a 10 minute walk north on the right. The Toronto Metropolitan University, which I will always call Ryerson, is just a 10 minute walk south. Fun fact, I took photography at Ryerson with a buddy of mine back when I was a young kid, and I actually had a short career as a photographer. Didn't last long, but I still love photography. Five minutes more south and you're at Dundas Square and Eaton Center. Centercourt's been around since 2010 and has become one of the fastest growing developers in the GTA. That's something you want to hear when you ask about a builder. How long have they been around and what are they mostly developing? The reputation and experience is there and so is the track record. Right now they have 19 high-rise residential projects completed or currently under construction. That's more than 10,000 homes they've added to the housing market, which is pretty impressive. One of the things that attracted me the most is their track record record of zero cancelled projects and zero days of interim occupancy. That means no projects going into receivership and little risk of bankruptcy, which we've seen with other developers over the last few years. And one thing that sucks about interim occupancy is obviously the fees that you have to pay the builder while you wait for the building to register and for title to transfer to the owner. People commonly call it phantom rent because the money is not even going towards your own equity. You're paying rent to live in your own home, all because the unit is not in your name yet, but is in a good enough condition for you to move into. But this isn't the case with Center Court's projects. When a buyer of their unit takes possession, they go straight to final closing. There's no ongoing construction, amenities are ready to use, you get the keys, get your mortgage, and you're good to go. Zero interim occupancy is pretty awesome. I remember when I bought this place, I thought it was going to be at least a year before Center Court broke ground, which is common with most condo developments. But with this one, sales were completed in February and they broke ground, I think, in May. Just three months later, that's pretty impressive. Fast forward to almost three years later and you can see that the building is looking pretty good. I was told that construction is moving well with the completion of the 37th floor slab pours and at the same time they're working on the second and third phases of construction that include window installations that have already been completed on the 22nd level. All of this is made easy and kept with the project timelines with precast panels. Once the outside of the building is done they'll move on to the fourth phase 
three, four, fourth phase, which includes framing the interior, flooring, painting, and the installation of mechanical and electrical systems. Basically, everything that needs to be done inside is done in the fourth phase. The fifth and final phase includes wrapping things up on the outside, like landscaping, new curbs and sidewalks, and new streetlights. I'm definitely going to enjoy discovering more about this area. Toronto has so much to offer when it comes to food and lifestyle options, and I'm not a big foodie, but I'll pretty much try anything from any culture. My favorite? dim sum. So what did you think of this video? Let me know in the comments because like I said, I'll be following up again with more episodes in the series on the things that I've learned along the way and even other regrets I have. But also I'd love to incorporate some of your questions and comments too. The next video is going to cover things like what to look for when you're looking into floor plans and making decisions based on what you see on paper or at a presentation center and even comparing the investment to something a bit safer like a GIC or even the stock market. I'm also going to talk about how I got into the idea of maybe doing doing an assignment sale, and also what my deposits look like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.